Okay, welcome back. In this special here on today, we're focusing on violence against children. I have with me uh, in the last hour or so, Ms. Dumisi Lenala from Childline, Ms. Mike Heibrechts from UNICEF, Mr. Patrick Solomons from Molo Shongololo, and Mr. Steve Miller, Save the Children. Now, as we get to the last part of our discussion, I want us to focus on the issue of hope here to say, what are things that are working? What are you doing in your various areas that is working, that is protecting our children, that is helping? And what should the way forward be? Mr. Misilena, let me start with you, because just before we took a break, you were saying you want to tell us what Childline is doing. I think this is the right time now to hear about what are you doing, and I'm going to try and try to be as brief as possible, and we can get a sense from the others as well. Then we can conclude by saying what is the way forward. So what is Childline doing for our children currently? So quickly, as Childline, we have the helpline, which is a 24-7 toll-free number that children and anyone in the community can call when there are issues and concerns about children. So for us, that is almost the immediate and the first contact with the child protection system. What's the number? Because not only do what, we what's receive the number? calls, what's the, number? the number is 08000 double five double five five oh eight thousand and that is really the five, initial five. double five yes okay. and that introduces most children and communities to the child protection system so that is the main really um service that i can share with the community which can be used immediately at no cost okay that's one of the things we're doing and steve save the children yeah so you know, silver bullet thinking is very human. We, we, we look for that one thing that we can do that can really change everything here. And that's not possible. This, this is a long road. So if I think about parenting as an example, we do a lot in, in, in the shape of positive parenting. And this is, is an approach, I practice it myself in my own home, that takes a lot of work. It's not overnight. My five-year-old is constantly challenging me. And I, I put a lot of effort into being a positive parent, and, and you can learn about that on our website if you want to. But I think the most important thing that we're doing, and that others are doing as well, is getting young people involved, and really teaching young people how to stand up for their rights, to understand what the situation is, and to demand that things change. And I promise you, Dan, you see the most amazing things. You see children with confidence to speak out. They're becoming role models in their communities. That's where it starts. And if you can change that mindset, so they understand how to deal with this, then you're empowering the children themselves. Uh, Mr. Solomon's Molo Shongololo, what, what are you doing? Yeah, um, we've got a very long footprint, but um, one of our main focus is we educate children about their rights. We believe that a child who knows and understands his or her rights are able, better able to protect himself or herself or other persons. So we do a lot of, lot of rights education work and life skills development work empowering children. And that empowerment also is to facilitate children's participation in public decision-making processes. For almost 20 years, we advocated for the uh, Western Cape Commission for Children to be implemented in the, um, in the Western Cape. And eventually, we've succeeded, right? Uh, we, I remember we used to stand alone in our advocacy for that. It was a constitutional um, obligation. So today, there's a commissioner who can help assist to monitor the, uh, the implementation of the rights of the child. We also provide services directly to children who's been traumatized because of sexual violence. So we work with the poorest of the poor children who's been raped, who's been sexually assaulted, and who's been sexually exploited. And sometimes we come across uh, children who's also been trafficked. And here we provide basic uh, social support services. Services. We do the assessments, um, um, referrals, counseling, therapeutic work, um, and also empowerment work. At the moment, I'm working, this morning, I'm working with a group of children in an arts and um, healing and empowerment session. This is a, like a five-week program. We work with small groups of children. And then, of course, also we have to work with their, with their parents. So we do uh, child and parent sessions. And then, of course, um, the other thing that we do is that we engage with role players because when something bad happens to a child, he or she will need multiple support services. So we have to work with the community. We have to work with um, social development, the police, 
with their health department. So we work with a whole range of service providers so that we can provide an improved service for, for children. Okay. So, so, so that, that, that seems like quite, quite a bit of um, advocacy quite, work as well. Okay, no, advocacy work is important. From a global perspective, I'm sure UNICEF, you get lots of requests for funding, I, I would think as a United Nations organization, but what, what are you doing to support this country in, 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 the, in, in the struggle, let's call it that, to, to make sure that our children are safer? Because see, you've given us the picture, it's dire. Thank you so much, Dan. So, first of all, we helped South Africa become a member of the Global Partnership to End Violence. This is a global initiative that began in 2015. And with that, now we have a national program of action on violence against women and children. Also, the president has committed a highest level commitment in the national strategic plan to end GBV and femicide and violence against children is there. We are heavily advocating for the Office of the Rights of the Child to be reinstalled in the Office of the President. We are training members of Parliament on child protection and child rights. We have an agreement with the South African Human Rights Commission. But it's really the core of family strengthening that we are working on with parenting programs, DSD, Sinovoyo, men care programs, Slonka Gender Justice, Heartlines. We want to create a movement of men with a million men to become empowered in their role as fathers. And then it is important to look at com community cohesion and solidarity through the establishment of safe parks, child use care workers, community gardens, to build that spirit of Ubuntu again. Okay. In the last three minutes that we have, I'm going to go around quickly with each of you to give you a parting shot to say, if we had to focus, if you had to focus on one thing, help South Africa focus on one thing. I know it's complex. You've painted a very complex picture and very brilliantly so. Thank you very much. But if there was one thing that in the next short to medium term going forward on this journey that uh, Steve has said it's going to be a long journey. There's not, you can't fix one thing. There's no silver bullet uh, in his words. What would it be? Can I start with you, Steve, in conclusion? Very briefly. We've got three minutes to go. I'm going to have to say that child protection needs to be at the center of this COVID-19 crisis recovery. As we are coming out of lockdown, we're seeing what's happened during the preceding months. We really need to put the resources and the money into this system, support it, put it front and center. And secondly, sorry, I know you said one, but coalitions become so important. My colleague from UNICEF mentioned it as well. We've seen the South African National Child Rights coalition come together during this crisis. It's taken years for us to do this. And this crisis has brought us together as organizations, and now we're fighting for children. So that has to continue going forward. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Solomons? Well, from our side, it's basically we need to put children at the center of our degree. And so we need to take a child rights approach to service delivery. And I think we, uh, we will go a long way if we can um, do that. And throughout government, throughout civil society, to put children at the centre, to take a child rights approach to the delivery of services to communities. And uh, Ms. Dumisi Lenala from Childline. Thank you. I think we do need to see child protection and child abuse as issues of national disaster and put the same intent and commitment that it deserves. As organizations, we need to continue doing what we do now and collaborate and work together, putting children first. Put children first. Uh, Mr. Hybrex from UNICEF, I'm sure you'd agree with that. Exactly. So I concur with everyone. But um, family strengthening and community child protection committees to make sure that everyone in this nation knows how to protect a child and create a nurturing environment. Uh, family strengthening, meaning uh, we have to go to the unit where the child lives and give the right support, but uh, with the high levels of poverty and inequality, that's going to be a tough one. So then the importance of social protection needs to be acknowledged, as well as economic empowerment, youth employment and economic empowerment of women and men with these high levels of unemployment. As Patrick said, it's very important to create sustainable jobs that are well well, okay. well paid for. Thank so we you need very to much. create more equal and just society. 
Thank you very much, Ms. Mikey Hybrex from UNICEF, uh, parting ways there. Thank you very much as well to Mr. Missile Nala from Childline South Africa, Mr. Patrick Solomons from Molo Shongololo, and uh, last but not least, Steve Miller from Save the Children. For this discussion we've had, and earlier we were joined on the line by Major General Bafana Linda from the police. He works with the investigations into family violence and, uh, of course, uh, instances of violence against children like trafficking. Well, there you have it, and this is where we end off for today.